they need to break them up with antitrust uh, legislation so they're not so powerful, so there's at least competition. But they are in this mindset. They are of this worldview. They don't have a Christian worldview, and this is why they say this. They're, just, they're being true to themselves. Right. What we need to do is have a paradigm shift in this country so people begin to understand what's really important, and that is uh, the Lord. Steve, you're a publisher. Please help us with this. There are some Christians now who are watching us, and they'll say, it's all of the devil. I just won't use it. But would you say and tell Christians how uh, whatever the devil intends for evil, the Lord intends for good. So we shouldn't all just jump off of social media, right? Shouldn't we use it to a certain wisely? Can you talk oh, to us about that? Oh, absolutely. And you can connect with so many people, and you yeah. can get your message out. And the thing is, they can't stop everybody. Right. They, they stop the higher profile things. But then they also generally will cave in. Mm -hmm. uh, later on when pressure is put so on them. So just use it, but oh. use it for good. Okay, right? you wrote okay. a book yeah. about yeah. Mr. Trump, our president. Okay. How in the world did he get, you know, he's not a holy roller or, you know what I mean? He's not. Not a, at all. Not, <laughs> you know, he doesn't say hallelujah on Air Force One probably when he walks <laughs> in. And, you know? I probably. doubt it. And so, but here they have lumped the president of the United States with Christians, with evangelicals. Mm -hmm. And it was the evangelical crowd, that, according to your book anyway, that elected him. I just read it again today. Well, you know, Hillary Clinton wrote a book that said what happened. You know, she couldn't believe it happened. And I say my book answers the question. And the answer is that God intervened. Yeah. Because millions of people were he praying, sure God, do something. Because we were losing again and again and again, and nobody would stand up to this. The few people that didn't stand up to it were steamrolled. But yet Donald Trump has stood up. He has survived things that would have brought other people down. So I like to, you know, in the book, the second chapter is called Answered Prayer. Uh, you know, interviewing people who, like me, think it was answered prayer. Right. And so millions of people were praying. God answered in a way we did not expect with a person we didn't even like because he wasn't one of us and because he had a background. But, you know, as we begin to see who he really was, he's changed. He's really a very nice person. And also he's standing up for our rights. He's become our champion. Yes. And isn't it more important for the policies that are enacted than someone's personal piety? Right. Otherwise, we would just try to figure out who the best Christian is to vote for them. Well, th you're not able to necessarily govern, you know. So yeah. God, yeah. God has always used imperfect leaders. Yes. Mm -hmm. And aren't we glad so that God can use us yes. too? Yes, amen. Yeah, the so the man is functioning against all odds. He really is. He's he really got Republicans is. who hate oh. him with their passion. Uh. And, and Democrats, they hate him so bad that they have from day one have tried to impeach him. Who've ever heard of him trying to impeach a president from the minute he steps into the White House? Well, let me say this really quick. When I first met President Donald John Trump, he was candidate Trump, but I had always, I had always liked him and admired him. Mm -hmm. And so during the elections, I had a short list of five people. He was definitely on that list. Mm -hmm. But I initially supported uh, Secretary Ben Carson, Dr. Right. Ben Carson. Yeah. Yeah, he was him. still on the uh, ballot in Atlanta, in mm -hmm. Georgia, mm -hmm. so I was actually able to vote for him. And as soon as he stepped out, he immediately joined candidate Trump, and yes. I did too. So I was there from the, that, the beginning there. Yes. And so I had met him at a meeting, and I walked up, and I was beginning to walk forward. I said, sir, hello. He says, you don't need to tell me who you are. I know who you are. I like you. <laughs> and I said, I like you too. And so... All the way through, when they would say anything about him, I don't endorse candidates anymore. I just pray. Because God had told me uh, in 2007. But she was photographed with him and many, very publicly. Many, many, many times. Many times. And I would just say, I, I said, I'm praying time. for him. Let's do this. And so I, I continued to do that and to pray with and pray for him. And if people would say things about him that just weren't true, fake news. And I said, well, I like him. Well, don't say you like him. Don't say. I said, but I do like him. <laughs> And so, and it's been like that all the way through. You know, my book reports some of what she's saying. Mm -hmm. These were meetings that I was not in, but I interviewed uh, actual participants who said that he seemed to know who the different ministries. 
He watches Christian wow. television yes. late at night. Yes. He kind of knew who they were. They were they were dumbfounded. He's a very very smart man. You know, you're the head of the Civil Rights for the Unborn. Oh, Alveda, I love now, that. Now, you almost have to vote for the Republican platform. You really do, because the because that's the only platform that stands up for the rights of the unborn. That is 